Hi everybody, welcome back to the shop. So finally I'm releasing another video. Fortunately it's just an update to my previous video which was my prototype process where I made a uh, steady rest for the Harbor Freight mini lathe which of course is adaptable to pretty much any mini lathe. Should clarify that. So in that previous video I alluded to some changes or some updates I was going to make in the future. Well I've made those updates and changes so that's what this video is going to be about, is showing you what I've done and see if it works any better. Now, in editing the footage, I realized I was missing a lot of pieces. I don't know if I forgot to record, if the camera shut off, or both. So, at the end of this, I'll return and go over any aspects I didn't mention. And one more thing I want to add, I uh, created some plans for this project, free of charge. So if you don't want to listen to me ramble, just go down below into the description and you can download these plans for yourself. I'm kind of anxious for somebody to do that and give me some feedback on if it worked good for them or maybe they find some changes that could help improve this design. So let's roll that beautiful bean footage. Okay, so after testing this out, I quickly saw problems with this device. The biggest one being this right here. This was incredibly difficult to tighten without holding one hand and you still needed a wrench. So I've addressed this issue. This for me is the worst of the issues. So what I have done is over here I've created a block. Let's take this out of the clamps. Okay, I've created a block that this right here will fit between the rails of the bed and this will fit underneath it to help lock it in. Now in order to secure this, I've got one of these. I love using these. These are called pronged washers. They look similar to a T-nut, but they're designed for a carriage bolt. So we're going to put this through on the bottom, and then this carriage bolt will come up, and then obviously that will allow this to tighten down and not spin. So that solves that problem. And that brings us to the other issue I have is with these arms, when you're trying to tighten them, this bolt also wants to spin. Now this is easier to put a wrench on and not as much of a annoyance. However, I want to address this as well. Now I may not do so in this video since what I would like to do is you can buy these in quarter inch. However, the problem with these is they're extremely difficult to find. My goal with this project is to make this something very simple, make this a simple project anybody can make without needing any specialty tools other than the wheels. So something like this being a specialty item. Now I saw online, obviously you can get them from the usual suspects like Amazon has them. Uh, MenardsWebsite.com seem to be the cheapest, even with the shipping. So if you want to buy those, up, the only problem is you're going to be getting a whole box of them, not just you know two of them, which is all you really need. Let's talk about the wheels. So I did get the smaller. These are smaller wheels. They're 72 millimeter rather than the 76, I believe these are. They're definitely a lot softer. I'm hoping my theory is correct since these haven't been tested out yet. However, they do fit perfectly with my measurements. The only downside to this particular set I bought is I didn't realize is that the bearings themselves are much smaller. Fortunately, 5 16 inch bolt still fits to the middle, so that hasn't changed. The only bummer is you see that the bolt head almost completely covers. It still spins freely, so that's the only other issue. Now what I've done is I've also I found some plastic spacers because what we were doing before is when you put it between the wood, you need to have a washer in there. Well, you can't do a washer on these because the washer will completely cover, if I can pick this up, will completely cover the bearing and there's it's going to bind. So that doesn't work. So you're going to need some kind of spacer. Now, what's really neat about this particular set, not only is this super cheap, I think this was $13.99 on eBay through the company I normally go through to buy skate wheels. And there will be a link in the description below for them. Well, this particular set, not only do you get the wheels, you get the bearings, they also give you a bushing and axle set. Now, this is awesome. These would fit perfect as well since they fit on the 5 16 You could use these as a spacer, but I decided I wanted to save these for a different use. So I managed to find these at Home Depot. Plastic, basically the same size. They're maybe a little bit thicker, but that's fine. It'll still fit on the bearing and, and only ride on the center part not restrict its movement. So let's put this all together with the new wheels and a new tightening system. I'm gonna to have to widen this hole a little bit. 516 just about fits actually already so I'm gonna just file it a little bit bigger 
and we'll put it on the lathe and we'll put it to the test. Well, everything was going perfectly, and here's another example of what prototyping is all about. When I made this to fit in this channel, the piece of wood and this block, they fit perfect, and there's a little bit of a gap underneath here, so you still have enough clamping. However, what I didn't account for was my addition of this T-nut on the bottom. I wasn't worried so much about the bolt head. As you see, that's what that little notch is actually for. That's for the bolt head, say, on the bottom of, you know, all of these tail stock and your tool rest. Well, the thickness of the actual T-nut is what's interfering now. It, it hits. So what I ended up doing was just sanding down the bottom of the block enough to compensate and it worked just fine. Okay, so I stopped the video before it got any more painful to watch. Got some talking points here, though, to go over with you. So this first thing that I didn't cover, uh, I was mentioning about the difficulty in these bolts for the arms. Well, what my solution came up with, and there might be better ones that someone else might come up with, for now, I put a T-nut in there in place, and that's fine, but what I figure is going to happen, which is common with something like a T-nut, the constant tightening and untightening, it would probably start loosening it. So when I put the bolt in, I threaded a bolt from the back side through the T-nut. I actually epoxied it in place. So that bolt's basically permanent now. One other thing I wanted to point out that I haven't mentioned that also aided in clamping ability and also preventing things from moving as you tighten is to put a washer under every knob. I found with these especially, when you put a washer underneath it, then it keeps this arm in place a little bit better. The other thing I did that really made a big difference, I added sandpaper to the bottom of the arms. And I figured that would give it a little bit of extra gripping ability, and that does appear to have helped. And one thing that made it nice and convenient is I ended up using some of these sandpaper strips that you can get from one of these little sets. This particular one's from Rockler, I think other companies make them, where you just pull off and tear off what you need. So. There happened to be one inch wide, so that's perfect. You don't have to worry about the width. You just cut off however much you need. So with those three additions, it made this a more functional piece of kit. Now, what I did find, though, is I was still getting vibration. Now, I'm still a noob, so I might be missing the obvious to some people. Well, in some of the research I did, I think I did miss some of the uh, obviousness of what I was doing wrong. When I set the spoon into the lathe, or the blank for the spoon, um, the head of it, you know, I just approximated where the center of that piece of wood was. Well, what I realized is it wasn't centered on the headstock. I had seen some other videos where people commented about maybe knocking the edges off just to equalize the piece so that it's spinning smooth and vibration free. So I do believe that is part of what was inducing vibration is that the headstock the blank in the headstock was not, it was out of round, so it's inducing vibration. Even though the end is perfectly centered, I think that was part of it. Going to need a lot more testing for that, so that'll be for a future video. Um, now, back to the soft wheels. My findings with the soft wheels is, yes, it does appear to take out more of the vibration, but what I have noticed is the soft wheels appear to burnish the wood a little bit. So depending on the wood you're using, and that may not really be a big issue, you know, you just sand it out. But it's just something worth noting. 
is on a softer wood, even though to me this cherry is not soft. And that might actually be, might have just answered my own question right there. The harder woods may get the burnishing more. So after all is said and done, it's a functioning prototype. I'm gonna keep using it, maybe tweaking it. Not sure if I'll make any more update videos. If I get some requests for that, then I will. And But I really wanna encourage somebody out there to make this prototype as well and maybe help me perfect the design. And it's free of charge, did I mention that? Um, so I hope everybody is staying well and healthy in this quarantine time that we're in. And uh, until next time, you take care.